Hello, I am Minecraft Phenom08, and today I will be teaching you how to automate the usage of Ender IO machines with the mod Applied Energistics 2 and the ME system, or the Matter Energy system. So let's get started. The first thing that you will need is a properly functioning ME system, and I have one right here. It consists of an ME controller, an ME drive, a 1K crafting storage, and a ME pattern terminal connected to an ME glass cable which is of the flukes variety so as we can see there's not much going on in here i have a few different things here but uh nothing's really going on here and um what i want to do is i want to automate this sag mill with this system right here so the first thing i will need is i will need to put down the me interface the me interface is the block that can actually kind of function between the me system itself and other blocks this is how I can interface with other blocks. So let's go ahead and put down a sag mill. If we take a look at it, first off, we need to drop in a capacitor into this slot right here, which I do by shift left clicking. And additionally, uh, I need some energy for it. So I have a basic capacitor right here that will energize it. And actually, let me move this over to right here so that we can see this uh, front face here just a little bit because that kind of lights up as it is functioning so that we can see that. Um, as you can see right here, if we go to the configure the IO, uh, we see that the Ender IO machine has uh, none as the label for everything. However, if we right click, we can shuffle through some modes here. We have pull, we have push, we have push pull, and we have disabled. If we leave, leave everything to the default setting, we can actually push items from the ME interface to the sag mill, and I will show that by setting up a pattern. If we take a look at coal ore with our system here, if we right click on coal ore and go to the sag mill, we see that the coal ore, when ran through a sag mill, will, will produce three coal. Uh, sometimes we'll get some pulverized coal, sometimes diamond, sometimes cobblestone. We're just gonna worry about the coal. So let's set up a pattern with this terminal right here. So we're gonna say that, uh, we need to hit this button right here first. We'll say that one coal ore equals three coal. So let's go ahead and put that in the pattern. And then to use this, we are going to drop this pattern into the ME interface right here. And um, if we go to auto craft some coal here, and we can do that by clicking over to the craft, let's just say we want three. So if I go ahead and hit start, it should go ahead and push the coal ore into the sagmo. it has. And as we can see, the coal pops out right here. So uh, as you can see, the coal is still stuck in here because it cannot make its way back to the ME interface until we do some configuring with this uh, with the faces here. So one thing we can do is we can set up this, this to be either push or push pull, and it will push these uh, products of the uh, craft back into the ME system through the ME interface. So if we can see over here, we can see that the craft is finished and that it received its coal. So one thing I should mention here is that if we have this in a push-pull configuration, and we have multiple machines around an ME interface, sometimes uh, an item that gets pushed out of one sag mill may be pulled into another sag mill just by accident, and that can kind of screw things up occasionally. So a lot of times what I like to do is I will have this set to none, and then on the top here, I'll have this set to push, and then I will set up some item conduit or item duct to actually pull these items out. So if we set this to extract, always on, and then this over here to insert, we can get the items out of here without, without uh, and back into the system without accidentally pulling in items that we don't want back into the sag mill because that does happen occasionally. So let's go ahead and do our craft just one more time. So as you can see, this is set to none. The top is set to be push. So let's craft some more coal here. And uh, let's, do, let's do 15. So that'll be five coal ore. Uh, that'll take a little bit longer. As you can see, we are crafting the coal or, or the coal right now from the coal ore. Uh, it's going through and the items are being uh, put back into the system and if we come back over here we can see that uh, we've received six coal now and so that's cool uh, once this is done uh, there will be one more thing that we can do with this and that is we can set up some auto processing use the using the ME interface and the sag mill here 
And how we are going to do that is uh, actually let's make sure that that's done, which it is. So that's cool. Let's go back to uh, so we can see everything in the system, which isn't much right now. It's just uh, these few items. And let's set up this ME interface. Uh, one thing we can do with these slots up here is we can tell the system to keep a certain amount of uh, certain materials up here in the ME interface at all times. So if we go ahead and do that, we see that we already have coal in the system. So it pushed in three coal into this config. And it actually, I want to uh, not put the coal right there. I want to put the coal in the last position. And that is so that we can see this kind of in action here. So once I drop all of this stuff in the system, it should pop over here to the config in the ME interface. And what we can do with that is we can tell this Ender IO machine to pull from the ME interface. And essentially it will pull these items out and it will process them and then it will dump them back into the, the system. And we can actually do that without this up here. So we can uh, take this to push pull and then let's actually get rid of this up here and let's actually get rid of it. And as we can see, it is working as an auto craft or auto processing unit. So that is pretty cool. I think uh, I actually thought for a second that it did the little trick that I said before where it uh, took the nether quartz and put it back into the system, but it didn't do that. Um, it could though. Uh, but I think that's just about all. Um, actually, there's one more thing I should mention. Uh, on this right here, there is one big difference from Indrio machines and thermal expansion machines. When you have this set up to push or pull or push pull, it is automatically pushing and pulling uh, from the Sagmo itself. It will auto pull and auto push out, whereas the thermal expansion machines, you can set them to be not auto pull, but accepting an item from a certain direction. Um, that would be kind of like the none setting over here. I think if I were to go ahead and put my item conduit on top that I could pull items out. Let me test that real fast because I don't think I've actually tested that. Yes, you can. So if you have it set up to none, you can pull items out or put items in, but it will not be obviously automated or anything or not automated from the block itself as in it will not auto push or auto pull. But uh, that's another way that you can automate the Ender IO machines and they are rather configurable and it's really, really nice. It's also really nice to be able to automate them with ME systems, obviously. So, and that is how you automate Ender IO machines using the mod Applied Energistics 2 and the ME system from Applied Energistics 2. If you feel like you learned something today, feel free to drop a like. And if you are interested in learning more about automation in modern Minecraft, Definitely consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Signing off, I am Minecraft Phenom08, and I will see you next time.